Donald Trump hits his 100-day milestone this weekend. And as they say, marriage and fatherhood can change a man. Has the presidency changed him? Well, he's tweeting less and using fewer capital letters, shifting and scaling back on certain positions. But is it clueless flip-flopping or a sign of growth? Joining me to discuss are Jennifer Nassour, former chair of the Massachusetts Republican Party, easy for me to say, and currently of counsel to Ruben and Rudman, nice to see you, you. and Dan Primack, business editor at Axios, and of counsel to nobody, as far as I know. Fine. It's day, I think it's 98 today. Is he the same Trump today as he was on January 20th? Mostly. I think the only big difference is that he realizes this is a much harder job than he probably realized when he was going into it. I think he perhaps thought that this was kind of like, well, he didn't know how to campaign, but he figured that out. He won, and therefore he'd figure this out and it would be just as easy. Clearly, he knows it's not. Now, I know that you've changed. You couldn't stand him and now right. you're admiring some things. But has he changed? Is that what caused the change in you? Yeah, yeah. How so? I think that he has kind of figured out that he knows now what he doesn't know. And he's okay that, with that. And he's okay saying he's changed his mind. He's seen the light. He now understands whether it's sitting down with the president of China and figuring out that North Korea isn't as easy to change as he thought it was going to be or going in and using some strong military tactics, or even having to work with Congress. You know, speaking of that, I mean, uh, uh, critics will call those things and many more flip-flops. Yeah. But uh, uh, NATO is obsolete. It's not anymore. I'm not going to strike Syria. I am going to strike Syria. Mm -hmm. like, you know, go on a, a NAFTA. Uh, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm not going to get rid of it. I may modify right. it. Most people who don't like him would say those are more grown-up positions than he had before he, quote, flip-flopped. So is that not a sign of growth, or what it's is a that sign a sign of, of growth? I think it's really simply, but I think it's more, though, a sign of that he doesn't really have any core principles, right or left, and that he does whatever happens to be most convenient at the time. The, the China is a currency manipulator. Well, it's inconvenient to say that when you're about to meet with the president of China. That's an awkward conversation, I would assume. So he doesn't do it. I, that's the thing, though. I, the question, I think, for everybody is what does he actually believe and I think the answer honestly often is he doesn't really have a core belief on a lot of these he wants to get something done whatever that something believes is. in winning believes in winning. How about on st staffing I mean he we started with people like Flynn and Bannon sort of the yeah. the two antichrists to the uh, his critics has he not done better than McMaster's uh, he has I mean the Bannon's, et Bannon's obviously still there uh, the, I mean the big staffing issue of course is the lack of staff you know the fact that you know when this tax plan comes out yesterday the problem for Mnuchin and the Treasury Secretary is there's no one under Mnuchin or almost nobody well, under. It's not him. just the Treasury Department. It's, it's all in, over. Isn't that a problem? Is we're 198 days in, and once you get below the cabinet level, and he was complaining the Democrats were slow, so slow to confirm, he's been even slower to nominate for critical positions, the ones that actually implement things. So I guess I look at it a little bit different. I thought the rushed decisions of Bannon and Flynn were exactly that. They were rushed, impulse decisions mm. that other people told him what to do. I I think taking his time and making other appointments and bringing other people in slowly and more calculated is a much better strategy for him because it, it, see, it seems that when he's reactionary, he makes very bad decisions. Well, let's, let's take a current event. It, it, I would assume when I heard you two were coming, I assume we were going to talk about, well, government's going to shut down in 30 hours. It's not shutting down in 30 hours in great part or unlikely to unlikely. because he withdrew his demand for a billion dollar, a billion for down payment on right. the wall. Again, is that him being totally clueless and realizing, oh, my God, I made a demand that's a disaster shut down to celebrate my 100th day? Or is it him growing into this is the real world? I got to be pragmatic more than I used to be. Which is it? I think it's both, right? I, I think it's I, I think he has to be pragmatic. But the pragmatism is, oh, my God, I don't want the government shut down, blamed on me because we're going to partially, you know, barely fund a wall that's not going to get built anyway. So it's pragmatism. But it's also I mean, it's also a little bit of panic, I think. I, and it's and so I take a totally different approach. And, you know, my feelings on on how he was before. He is not. To be a clear, you were no fan at all of Donald right, Trump throughout right. this nominating and process. And so I'm looking at it from from more of the skeptical side and saying, most politicians, I would say, yes, they were flip flopping. In Donald Trump's case, he's not flip flopping. He's actually on the job learning. And I think that this is one of those occasions where he says this was something and that was important to me. They're going to shut down government. We can't do that. Now I have to make a deal. Was that a smirk or a smile? I can't even tell. That uh, was more of a smirk. I mean, a, a smirk <laughs> at the idea of the on the job learning. Look, all presidents do on the job learning, right? Nobody has exact training for it. But it, it's not really 
That's what I'm looking for. It's not comforting, I think, when you, when you hear somebody say the president is on the job learning, particularly in kind of these basic things that I think probably you and I kind of knew I know, it's too late, though. Knew. I mean, I it's too late. And I'm he aware. wasn't a politician. And we, we elected someone who wasn't a politician. That's what you get. There's no way to know what's going to I wasn't a come. politician. I knew that was coming. <laughs> There's no way to know what, what you're going to step into unless you've actually been in there. And he wasn't a member of Congress. He wasn't a governor. And, and this is he's learning as he's going along. Okay, so we know how you two feel, I think. Let's talk about how the American people feel. You know, the analogy that I'm going to make, which is one of my favorites, I don't know if you ever saw the great Jimmy Kimmel bit where he sends someone out to Hollywood Boulevard years ago. Do you like the Affordable Care Act? No, I hate it. Do you like Obama? I mean, pardon me. I love that. Do you like the Obamacare? I hate Obamacare. There may be an analogy here. Here's his approval rating first, 44%, which is historically low at 100 days. But then listen to these things. On the economy, 62% have confidence in Trump's handling of the economy. 54% believe things in the country are improving. 52% have confidence in the handling of foreign affairs. Is it possible they still, the majority of the American people still aren't crazy about the guy himself, but they seem to be pretty happy about the direction we're taking on some pretty critical things. You know what I mean? Is that yeah. divide? It's sort of Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act. Is that a, for, a fair I, comparison? I, th I think it's completely fair. And look, and the reality is for the first 100 days, the United States, relatively speaking, hasn't had any crises, whether they be economic or foreign policy. There have been things that have happened, but most of the kind of big political firestorms have been because of things that Trump has done. Well, North and, and Korea brought. is not North his Korea, doing. But North Korea, but the average person doesn't wake up and, you know, yeah. you, when, kids aren't hiding under their desks right now. Okay, so you've been the positive one. But let me uh, t tamp that down a little bit. I would argue that if he goes ahead with tax cutting, he calls it tax reform, and health care, yeah. as it's proposed, which at least in my estimation does virtually nothing good for that populist middle class that got him elected, that all the good things that you've been citing in the last six or seven minutes go right in the toilet. Am I not right? So I don't think that we're going to see health care and tax reform at the same time. I think he has to pick his battle and pick which one is going to be more important to him. Would you not agree that both of them are particularly helpful to the wealthiest Americans and not so great for the middle class? I mean, I, I the new health care thing that the Freedom Caucus likes theoretically right. but to say not, goodbye to but the pre-existing. That's not going to pass because the moderates are not going to let it go and they need everyone to pass it. So he's going to be protected from his own excesses yes. by the moderates. Yes, because the moderates are going to say we're not going to pass this. So what's going to happen is you need the moderates or you need the Democrats. You need you need your entire coalition or you need some of the Democrats, you're not getting your entire coalition, and you're not getting the Democrats. Health care is off the table. He knows that. Everyone knows that. It's not even a consideration. I think you look next at, t at tax reform. If he's going to make the tax, uh, tax structure where it's 10%, 25%, 35%, and you're saying to the middle class, you're not going to pay more than 25%, well, you know what? Some people are paying 30, 32 percent. Some people are paying 20 percent. You even it out and it seems to be a little bit more fair. And you now don't need to go and spend lots of money as someone as part of the middle class and go bring it to an accountant when you could do it on your own. If it happens. Nice to see you, Jennifer. Great to see you. Great to see you. Thank you. Be well done.